um, distinguished leaders who are present here, the great people of Nakuru, good evening. Hamjambo, Wana Yesu Asifiwe, God is good, and all the time, Assalamu alaikum, Asanteni sana. Kwanza, wacha nafasi hii, nafasihi, nishkuru viongozi wote wanakuru wa kiongozi wa na governor wetu Susan na wananchi wanakuru kwa kutupokea jioni ya leo katika sherehe hii ya muhimu ya kuvuka mwaka kama watu wanakuru na watu wa Kenya asanteni sana kwa kutukaribisha hapa Nakuru County na Nakuru Town and let me, on behalf of the many friends who've come here this evening, thank the great people of Nakuru for welcoming us warmly into Nakuru. And we are now in the final minutes of 2023, an eventful year for individuals, communities, and for us collectively as a nation. We navigated through major difficulties, faced significant challenges, and celebrated numerous triumphs. Our nation is the sum of our lives, experiences, and aspirations. Like most of us, our country has lived through an eventful year and made encouraging progress across many sectors in the midst of daunting setbacks. The impact of global economic dynamics adversely affected us, compounded by the war in Europe, rising interest rates in America, and the unfortunate effects of climate change that occasioned the most severe drought in 40 years. All these factors slowed down our economic performance, resulting in increased commodity prices fertilizers and cereals experienced significant price hikes contributing to the rise in food prices and the overall cost of living. To manage, moderate, and overcome these difficulties, this year became the year of a complete paradigm shift in the handling of our national issues. We collectively summoned the courage to make bold, decisive, far-reaching, and long-term decisions to once and for all put our country on the path to attaining its full socio-economic potential. The choices. <clears throat> the choices we've made over the last year were neither easy, populist, nor convenient. They were, however, meaningful, appropriate, and necessary. In the short term, painful, but in the long term, gainful. 2023 is the year we decided to stop wastage and extravagance, instead opting to live within our means. We decided to cut expenditure by up to 400 billion shillings so as to reduce our borrowing. We decided to enhance our tax revenues by Kenya shilling 600 billion to fund our programs and development so as to safeguard our sovereignty and independence. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we certainly cannot be independent if we are enslaved by monumental debt as has been the case. We take pride in the strides we've made as a nation. We have triumphed over the threat of economic stagnation and are now in secure space with regard to our sovereign debt obligations. Inflation has reduced to 6.8% and our GDP is growing at a rate of 5.4%, placing Kenya as the 29th fastest growing economy in the world. In 2023, we decided to get rid of consumption subsidies 
that not only drove our nation into deeper financial distress, but were also unsustainable, opaque, and only benefited middlemen at the expense of those who truly deserved support. Instead, we deliberately redirected our focus to support production through incentives in our crops, livestock, and fisheries programs. Today, with the blessing of good weather, thanks to God, these interventions have enabled us to increase our food productivity by 40% at a fraction of the previous cost. Working with farmers, our foremost patriots, we shall double our efforts in 2024 until we reduce our Kenya shillings 500 billion food import bill to zero and rid our country of the shame of hunger. In 2023, we decided that growing our economy as has been the case in the past was not enough. Change was an inevitable imperative. As such, we rolled out an economic growth model intentionally designed to be inclusive, deliberately expanding opportunities and creating jobs. Millions of jobs, all types of jobs, construction jobs, technical jobs, digital jobs, as well as entrepreneurial opportunities, both locally and abroad. Our housing program, for example, not only provides decent home ownership for millions, including some slum dwellers who now live in squalor, but it also aims to reverse agricultural land fragmentation and has already created 120,000 jobs with plans to employ an even greater multiple of people next year. For the first time, my Mamamboga and Boda Boda friends will now have a chance to own a home in our Kenya shillings 4,000 a month, 3% interest rate tenant purchase scheme. <clears throat> that will be the case for other Kenyans on our 6% affordable housing and 9% market housing program. All these housing programs will be at a single digit interest rates, which is half the current rates. Ladies and gentlemen, our digital superhighway infrastructure with 22,000 computers being supplied is already creating thousands of jobs in our technical and vocational education and training institutions. Even as we roll out our ICT hubs in every ward and every constituency in Kenya. Our international jobs program is well on course, having negotiated many bilateral labor agreements to open up opportunities for employment for Kenyans globally. Our collective efforts have not only rescued us from economic paralysis, but propelled us towards a brighter future. We navigated complex debt situations, accelerated economic progress, and invested significantly in our human capital. Recognizing the pivotal role of education, we increased allocation to the education sector by Kenya shillings 127 billion, which enabled us enhanced capitation for our learners bringing us closer to the dream of universal education from ECD to the tertiary level. We also employed 50, 56,000 teachers to improve access to quality education throughout Kenya. We have equally made immense progress in promoting financial inclusion and dignity of Kenyans at the lower economic echelons. The Hustler Fund and the NSSF new contribution model exemplify our dedication to inclusive growth, financial well-being, and social security for all Kenyans. 
we have made affordable credit available to millions of Kenyans who for years were alienated and underserved by financial institutions. The Hustler Fund has disbursed over Kenya's shillings 42 billion to Kenyans in just one year, making it the largest financial inclusion program in Kenya. And most importantly, over 7 million Kenyans are now regular customers, transacting and doing business, freed from the bondage of Shylocks and predatory lenders. Kenyans who would otherwise not make it beyond the watchman at the financial institution now access close to 100 million shillings from the Hustler Fund every single day. We shall continue to improve and expand the range of products offered under this revolutionary intervention, intervention. Similarly, our universal health coverage program has set in motion a transformative approach to health delivery. With 100,000 community health promoters actively contributing to the betterment of our, of our nation's health, we are witnessing the tangible impact of our dedication to the well-being of people. In the new year, we continue our health transformation at the secondary and tertiary health levels, emphasizing the need for a fair contribution system for social health insurance, as the previous setup disproportionately burdened and alienated low-income earners from accessing health care. For the first time, ladies and gentlemen, every Kenyan, without exception, will have health insurance and all Kenyans will access treatment, including four notorious chronic conditions like cancer, hypertension, and diabetes without discrimination. <clears throat> These are only brief highlights of the work done and progress made this year. I acknowledge we do not have a strong history of commitment to positive transformation or a culture of consistent promise keeping in our political leadership. This may explain why many anticipated that this administration would abandon the commitments we made under the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. It is in this context, for example, that I understand the invitation by some for us not to honor our commitment on account that they are either too onerous or simply unattainable. For the record, I want to tell them, we are breaking new ground and charting a new political culture for Kenya. Instead of excuses to abandon our nation's transformation, I invite the skeptics, opponents, and the indifferent to change their perspective and embrace our new paradigm shift to pursue inclusive growth with a sense of urgency where leaders say what they mean and mean what they say. Yet as we celebrate all the achievements made so far, a number of our policies, programs, and other strategic interventions aimed at delivering necessary and urgent interventions of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda have been delayed, obstructed, and hampered by various challenges, including persistent litigation. There is nothing wrong with challenging public count. And in fact, the national interest is best safeguarded in an environment defined by the competition of progressive ideas, where a good proposal gives way to a better one. We all have a duty to make sure that the best ideas always prevail in enhancing the well-being of the people and making this nation prosperous and powerful. That is what our democracy exists to achieve. Having said this, you will agree with me that there is something fundamentally wrong with opposition without any viable alternative whose only purpose
is division, conflict, and anarchy. There is something wrong with litigation sponsored by hostage-taking vested interests with a sole aim to delay, derail, and sabotage the delivery of public programs and defeat public interest. Time and time again, Kenyans have clearly and manifestly demonstrated their devotion to pursuing opportunities for progress by voting for progressive policies, as they did in the last election. Kenyans are already are ready to propel their nation forward to greatness. What has held them back is a leadership invested in the status quo, which excludes the majority to benefit only a few. A politics with keeping millions in want and indignity to preserve the illegitimate privileges of a few and a resultant institutional system in which the disenfranchisement of ordinary people is the yardstick of public policy. This should and must change a new paradigm, my dear Kenyans, must be negotiated. There is an inevitable clash of ideologies at the moment that go beyond a mere conflict over choices. It extends to a disagreement between us as to who between the few who will power in the executive, legislature, and in the judiciary, and everyone else without distinction, who are the legitimate targets and beneficiaries of public policy. We are at the moment of reflection that calls us to revisit the first principles of our civil and political understanding, reevaluate the terms of our social contract, and place Kenyans, the ones we sometimes call ordinary, at the center of all national discourse. As we do this, we must appreciate one indisputable fact. Freedom is our lifeblood and identity. We are a society defined by opportunity, founded on free enterprise and democracy, where competition and merit are underpinned by compassion, inclusivity, and a strong sense of collective interest. Public policy must therefore respect, uphold, and promote this fundamental character, enhancing our aspirations by ensuring that everyone, and I repeat, everyone must be seen and heard, and that no one, and I repeat again, no one is left behind. For us to remain a viable nation-building project, every Kenyan must be represented at the decision-making table. The public interest is safeguarded by our constitutional dispensation, providing for the implementation of state policy for the benefit of all citizens, not some citizens. This includes the implementation of social and economic rights, a progressive economy creating jobs and wealth, fighting corruption, controlling wastage, supporting public institutions, and protecting freedom and the rule of law. This perspective radically increases the number of possible winners and dramatically diminishes likely losers. Yet, every new way of doing things can threaten the privileges of a dominant minority and alienate the beneficiaries of an unjust system. Whenever this happens, ladies and gentlemen, their associates can attempt to hijack national institutions, turning them into anti-people weapons for a select privileged few and saboteurs of inclusive transformation for the majority. We are, 
unfortunately, at such a moment in our national history. The question is, how do we proceed from this point? The people of Kenya have made great sacrifices to immensely facilitate us, their leaders, and all public servants, for us to do the very best that we can in making this country work for everyone and in making sure that our institutions protect and increase opportunities for wealth and employment for all. The people of Kenya have also invested in providing us, their leaders, in all arms of government with generous welfare and other benefits, including medical and housing benefits that they only dream of, in the expectation that we shall in turn safeguard their opportunities to access either commensurate, if not similar benefits. We must recognize, ladies and gentlemen, the extraordinary privilege that has been bestowed on us to serve this nation as members of the cabinet, the civil society, the security services, members of parliament, county governments, the judiciary, or in the commissions and independent offices. Accordingly, we are under solemn obligation to dedicate all our time, energy, and abilities to the advancement of the people's aspirations and the improvement of their well-being. In other words, the very best of our professional and moral and intellectual capabilities must be summoned in the service of the nation. And as trustees of the people, we are duty bound to exercise public authority and deploy public resources to the best of our judgment and discretion with the public interest in our mind. Our understanding of public interest must be aligned with the imperative to enhance the social contract and be connected with the urgent need to increase opportunities and transform the landscape of possibilities. Let us therefore reflect very deeply about the ways in which we act and speak in the name of the Constitution. We must ensure that institutional independence does not mutate into impunity and avoidance of accountability. We must be cautious lest our professed pursuit of or constitutionalism and obedience to the law turns into an empty ritual and hollow vanity for the majority of citizens. We must take, we must take an abundant care that our aim to protecting or advancing the people's rights does not deny them legitimate opportunities or make a mockery of their struggles and their aspirations. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when a public servant enjoying a house mortgage at 3% interest makes a decision to frustrate the housing program, robbing millions of young people employment prospects and denying millions of Kenyans the chance to own a home like them. This is also the case when a public officer who benefits from unlimited medical insurance invokes the law to derail the universal health care delivery, denying millions of vulnerable Kenyans a health cover, just like the one they have. It is also the case when a politician neglects the boundaries of democratic competition that opposing policy government policy for that matter, does not permit undermining the nation or sabotaging the national interest or the welfare 
of the people. In conclusion, the last general elections were a watershed moment for our nation. We finally came of age and set a new record, confirming to all and sundry that Kenya is a robust democracy. We turned over a new leaf, writing a fresh chapter in the Kenyan narrative. The era of ethnicity and ethnic political mobilization was well behind us. The anarchy of election violence was firmly relegated to the past. And more importantly, the people, not the system, had the final say. This Kenya is as the third highest recipient of remittances, according to World Bank. Accordingly, our country holds the third position as a globally attractive destination for foreign direct investment in 2024. Kenya has also achieved the status of the best adventure tourism destination in Africa and ranks 10th globally. With our newly crafted global positioning as the home of humankind and a visa-free regime, we are poised to double ethnic bigotry. A Kenya free of anarchy and violence and a nation not founded, not, not founded on negativity but a new positive narrative that is gaining momentum globally. It is important for us to remind one another of what really is at stake. We have come some encouraging way amid enormous challenges and significant difficulties. Our path will be easier, our journey will be faster, and our progress smoother if we all remember that the people of Kenya have interests that dictate our job descriptions and form the terms of our employment. Let us remember this always. And remember that with the new year comes our opportunity to do much more and much better. And that is why I wish every Kenyan, irrespective of their status, irrespective of their station, irrespective of where they live, a blessed, progressive, and successful 2024. Nantarudia niseme kwa wa Kenya wote. Mahali popote mulipo. Mwaka wa 2024. Ni mwaka wa baraka. Mungu ametupatia taifa. Ametupatia nchi. Yenye baraka nyingi. Ametupatia mambo mengi. Kenya leo imepata heshima duniani kote Kenya leo inatambulika ni jukumu letu kujenga taifa letu Good people we have a great country it is our responsibility to make it greater and we have a moment in history to do, to do just that and I'm asking all of us all of us leaders, all of us Kenyans, to work together to move our country, the country we all love, to the next level. Thank you. I again wish each and every one of you a great year ahead as I ask the people of Nakuru who lost some family members today, that we ask God to empathize with you as we empathize with you, 
that God is going to give the grace to the families that lost their loved ones today in Akuru County and those that did in Nyeri and a few other areas during this season. We wish them God's grace and that God will comfort them and give them safe passage even as we celebrate the new year. We stand with the families who have lost their loved ones. I want to say to all of us, Asante Nisana, I know we will be here for a while as we wait for the uh, for midnight. Welcome to this uh, celebration and my very best wishes in 2024. Asante Nisana, Namungu Abariki.